Oh, great. Here we go now. It does, I think. Uh, well, the business could be, we think it's going to be huge, so we're going to put everything into it. And hopefully it's going to stop us building and... Uh, so, get off the tools. Yeah, get off the tools. <laughs> put the tools away. Surprisingly, I'm not feeling very nervous at the moment. Uh, might change when those, when those lift doors open, but for now, confidence in the product, confidence in our, ourselves. Touch nervous, but yeah, got Palomir with me, so I should be all right. <laughs> Hello, my name is Pelham Vincent. And I'm David Hall. We're here to offer you 10% of our business, Fold Smart Limited, in exchange for £150,000. Is that it? No, no sorry. There's more. The flat pack furniture industry is worth £24 billion alone in the UK. The major problem being the fact of self assembly. We have a paint and pending on the products, and today we're going to show you how we can fully assemble a fully working wardrobe in under two minutes without the need for any tools or fixings. With this, we plan to revolutionise the flat pack furniture industry. Who's got a second hand on their watch? Two minutes. Go! <laughs> the clock's ticking, and the heat is on for the flat pack entrepreneurs. The carpenters from Reading are looking to assemble a deal with a dragon for £150,000. So next up we have the drawers. They unfold and then they're held in place and square with the base panel. Wow. Finally finished off with the hangar rail. And that's on the sprung-loaded mechanism. There's your fold rope. With the construction boxed off, two Kasulimen is keen to give their handiwork the once over. Do I have a look? Yeah. I certainly can, yeah. Mm. So all the items here are all flat packed, including the bed. And, and the bed as well? Yeah, everything. Yeah, we can yeah. Do the whole lot in okay. under 10 minutes. Let's go so. to bed. <laughs> oh, <okay. Ow>. Whoa! <laughs> yeah. oh. What happened there? You broke the bed. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Um, I guess. Yeah, don't worry, we'll put an invoice to you later. That looks dangerous. Well, this that is. Looks dangerous. We yes. do have a slight issue here. We left one of the supports. Oh really? Away because these are the initial only prototypes we Are have. you sure about that? Yes, I'm, and there's. You, I can I show know. you the brackets where there's a missing support. I tell you what. That's only one of me. I'd like to be two of us in a bed like that. But I mean, I guess. Would you be doing gymnastics? Not the big break the entrepreneurs were hoping for. But not everyone is feeling so pessimistic. That, to me, is actually really self-explanatory, really neat. Yeah. You can concertina it out and, yeah, hey. Sarah Willingham can also see the logic behind the idea. Guys, I must admit, I think that's a great idea. I really do. And you have definitely identified a problem. Flat pack furniture is an absolute nightmare. I can never understand the instructions. I hate it. And actually, I end up paying people like you guys to come in and do it. So I completely get where you're coming from. How much of a, of a problem do you think the assembly thing is? One of, the, one of the limitations of this is that for the sake of saving yourself a little bit of time on the assembly, what you compromise to some extent is uh, is on the aesthetic. So, for example, there's a, a line down the middle of that bed there, which I assume is part yeah. of the design. It isn't, it isn't. We've got um, single laminated sheets that can go across it. OK. That will fold, so it will look like one whole piece. But these are the first... Prototypes yeah, that right. we have. Okay. And, and our, our USP is, basically, this furniture can be put up, taken down. So, for, say, landlords or students who move a lot, so all of this can be bought, you know, roughly the same cost as your general flat pack, but I don't know if you've ever tried taking down a flat pack before and then putting it up again. It's near on impossible. I will definitely take your point on the taking down. So I think for the for the landlord market, there's there's um, so that's, then they can that's, that's definitely a big advantage. Get, um, furnished and unfurnished rooms. Okay. 
Kellum and David have managed to salvage a shaky start and prove they have a definite USP. But Peter Jones has been doing the maths and something doesn't add up. You're valuing a little design and some hinges at one and a half million pounds. Yeah. With the flat pack industry, UK alone, 24 billion pounds a year. Who, who told you that? Research. So just in perspective, in the UK, 24 billion is spent on flat pack furniture. Yeah. I don't believe it. Nor do I. <laughs> It's 500 pounds per head of population. Don't believe it. Where did, where did that figure come from? Internet. That would mean virtually every person in this country would have to spend five or six hundred pounds on flat pack furniture. That's just not possible. It might include kitchens as well. Kitchens, flat pack kitchens. But I'm, I'm more concerned. Before you, you see this, I think it's quite neat. And I could spend the next 20 minutes talking to you about it, but you've instantly got my back up by coming in thinking that you can value something like this whilst it might be a good design, and you demonstrated it quite nicely, at one and a half million pounds. It's... I, I don't... It's bizarre. If I gave you one and a half million pounds to walk away from this idea today, would you? Wow. Peter Jones's interrogation of the company valuation reveals their £1.5 million price tag is based on a figure plucked from the internet. And now Nick Jenkins has concerns over what the duo would bring to the investment party. How do you, how do you expect to get this distributed? That's why we're here. Yeah. We've, we're... I own a construction company at the moment, and Dave's a site manager carpenter. We're both carpenters by trade. Right, so that's okay. our, what we know about. We don't know about retail, distribution. We're learning as we go. But right. that's why we're here to get that kind of kickstart, if you like. But one of my concerns about your value, if, so, when people often come up with an idea, it's worth the opportunity. But I don't think you have the experience to be able to turn this into a business, which means that anybody coming in would probably have to add the experience that would turn this into reality. Now, that's probably that's, why you've come why here, here because but the valuation that you're looking at is, 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 is one that belongs to a business where you're coming with all that experience uh, packaged up, so it's too punchy for me. For that reason, I'm out. OK, thanks anyway. Thank you very much. Guys, I hate to say this, it does look like a college student's... Uh, that's, you know, that's what it is. We're but, not trying no, to well, be... OK, but what I'm trying to say to you is that Unless you've got a very big price advantage, you could be IKEA at their own game, I'd say, guys, you've got a problem. And for that, I'm not even going to waste my time. An evaluation of 1.5 million, I think, keep on dreaming, because I'm not going to make your dreams come true. I'm out. It's turning into the stuff of nightmares as Tuka Suleiman and Nick Jenkins fold on the deal. Overvalued companies rarely get an easy time in the den. Can Deborah Meaden find another route to investment? First of all, I think you're getting a pretty hard time. Um, I, your valuation is bracy. I put that down to business naivety. You don't actually, you haven't claimed to stand in front of us as business people. You've claimed to stand in front of us as inventors who have come up with something and you want help with a way to get that to the market. So, for me, the whole thing lies in the value of the patent. So, what I want to do is look at the patentable step in this yep. um, and why it's so important and is it easy to circumnavigate. I'm guessing it's that folding... It's the folding mechanism, it's, isn't it? It's the... Flipping this one up. So, you see how the shelf's in two equal size... Yes. Bits, ..and so is the top. Yeah. That's the bit that's patented, so equal length spacings that allow the unit to fold completely flat. OK, you will not get a patent on two pieces of wood of equal size that fold, so... All I know is, obviously, we don't know about patents. We've run to the attorneys, they've... They know what the idea is, they've done their... what they think is... So... 
OK, do you know I hate to be boring. I'm going to have to look at the patent. No problem. Because it's not making any sense to me at all. Guys, I worry for you. If you had a properly patentable step, your first job is to go out there and license it. Problem is, you are not going to get a patent. And that means you can't license. And if you're not careful, you will have spent 10, 15, I've watched people spend 30, 40,000 pounds on a patent and not get there. I don't want that to happen to you. You've invented something that's really very good here, but you are not going to get a patent on it. I, I'm sorry, there's nothing in there that I think I can even leverage for you, so I'm out. A no from Deborah Meaden, as she deems the entrepreneur's patent application about as robust as their incomplete bed. Does Sarah Willingham still see the product as the answer to her flat pack prayers? I wholeheartedly agree with everything that's been said. I don't think you're going to change the market. And, and I also agree with Deborah. I think your valuation was genuine naivety. I don't think you came in here to wind us up. I really don't. Look, I think you've got a lovely idea, and I think you can make a good living out of it. But I don't think it's investable. So for those reasons, I'm afraid I'm out. Sarah Willingham deconstructs the investment opportunity in less than 30 seconds. And now, Peter Jones is feeling unusually got at. Guys, just to clarify, I don't know where this thing about wind-up and valuations come from. I was very, very clear, very specific to you, asking you a question about why you valued this company for £1.5 million. And I don't think it's good enough to just excuse you as, as naivety. And the reason why I'm giving you a hard time about this valuation is because I think that's your fatal error. I think if you had have come in and said, 50,000, 50% 50 of the company, I don't know whether I've got something, here's a patent, and if you could introduce us to some of the people at IKEA or Wix, there might be some money in this, but we don't know because we're not business people. I think you might have had a very different response, personally. So, sadly, I'm going to say I'm out. Okay. But if you ever go to somebody again for investment, be more realistic and know your numbers. Thank you very much. Thanks. Solid advice, but sadly too late for Pelham and David. Have my day. Give it a go. They put that wardrobe together in under two minutes. Yeah. So I was dead excited when they first started doing it. But they've got nothing to sell. They've got no distribution, no manufacturing, no patent, nothing. Yeah. Just a dream. Oh, that's disappointing. That's disappointing. Torn apart. Huh? Torn apart. 